Welcome to this week's TDD Weekly Report for the week ending January 4th. Well, this is the beginning of my eighth season of the TDD Report. This has been around and actually going for seven years in the past, believe it or not. Although all not, seven, not all seven years were on YouTube themselves. It started out on a place called Live Video, which pretty much doesn't exist anymore. And I'm dedicating this show to my very first viewer that is still with me, even back into those days. There may be a few others around, but the one that I'm dedicating this show to has been one of my most loyal viewers for the entire run of the TDD Report, and that's my friend Katie Brewer. She has stuck around. She still watches. She still comments. So um, as I begin my eighth season on the TDD Report, and just for you that don't know, TDD stands for the Dumpster Divers. It was a group that existed back in 2007, 2008, but pretty much doesn't anymore. It's been uh, disbanded, but I keep the letters TDD around like I tell people. It's more or less just the letters TDD standing for the Dumpster Divers that was a group I belonged to of uh, artists, musicians, various people like that that for some reason decided to include me as a member of the group and uh, yeah I've uh, got enough people interested into this show after I accidentally posted on YouTube one time that I've stuck with it so I guess seven years of a show and you can go on to syndication can't you so if you're interested Discovery Channel I'm available so first up this is the discover this is from discovery.com the uh, one of the Martian orbiters has actually, um, they redirected it so that it could get uh, t within 28 miles of the larger of the two moons of Mars called Phobos. What they wanted to do is get a little bit better gravity readings. And as craft, um, just like we use craft uh, and have it orbit planets and stuff like that to get a slingshot effect, if you go close enough to a massive body, you can get a little bit of that slingshot effect that gives acceleration. Well, as they transmit the radio signal back to Earth, that acceleration will give you a little bit of a Doppler shift. And they wanted to get this in close enough to get better readings before they had known that the moon Phobos was likely made of about 33% empty space. So they think it may be a rubble pile of just rocks kind of loosely tied together with gravity. And as of last Sunday, they did the flyby successfully and um, nothing, nothing damaged the craft or anything like that. But they couldn't take any pictures, unfortunately, because during the whole fly flyby to get accurate information, they had to keep the dish from the craft pointed straight back towards the Earth. So it wasn't the correct kind of alignment to where they could get super close-up pictures of Phobos as far as anything visual. So it's basically just going to be scientific data. But in the future, it's probably going to help a uh, heck of a lot as we do more exploration and learning how to handle uh, asteroids and things like that. Um, next up, this is from Bloomberg News. This was uh, this is about Netflix. If any of you have a Netflix account, which I do, I got rid of my satellite. A lot of people have gotten rid and, rid and cut their cable because of Netflix. Um, very good bargain, I think, for around eight bucks a month. Well, now they're t testing in certain areas a new pricing plan. Um, you can actually go from seven ninety nine and reduce to six ninety nine and just have it play on one device. I guess they, they're testing because a lot of people share their Netflix accounts with their friends, so you'll have multiple viewers. Instead of uh, having each person have their own subscription, they'll just share with their friends and let their friends use their Netflix account. Well, this way you could cut down to six ninety nine and have just one device, or you could go all the way up to eleven ninety nine, and they don't say exactly how many devices with that. Maybe, I'm guessing, four or five, but um, supposedly you can keep the plan you have now. And they, they're saying, too, this is just... A test right now they're saying they're not going to guarantee that they're even going to switch to this this is just in limited areas to where they're giving this a test and they may totally discard it they may stick with it but uh, be interesting to see what you guys think about that would it be worth it to save an extra dollar a month and just you're only going to have to be able to use it on one device at a time or only one family member use it at a time I think right now as it reaches with the 799 plan as I remember when you log on as the third person it tells you too many devices not really sure um, but my family uses it, and sometimes more than one of us do use it at the same time. So what do you think about Netflix's new pricing plan? And this next one comes from my friend Steve Arsenault. I'd actually seen, this is a little robot spider, kind of, well not little, actually if you see it to scale. I, I'd only seen it at first in one video when Steve sent me this article um, and video. I'd only seen it, and it wasn't even to scale or anything. I saw about a one-minute video of this thing moving around, and I thought, wow, the movements are pretty good. I thought maybe it was a, 
a tiny robot spider about the size of your hand or something like that. Well, I guess this is a, a Kickstarter type of project, if not a Kickstarter project itself. But you can check out the video from Adam Savage that I'm going to give you here. He actually was one of the original purchasers of this device, and uh, he tells you the plus and minuses of it. But uh, it seems to me overall he's very happy that he bought this device. He said being a, a person that's more into a, a puppeteer type of control of devices. He says this thing is really great with the controls they give you and everything. He had a few problems with, um, because he does have a newer test model with the fact that the servos were a bit delicate and I guess he plugged in a connector a little bit wrong and fried the board so when he first got his robot spider he had to send it back but I'll put as, I, as I'm talking about this I'll put a little bit of the video down in the corner without the audio. Um, sorry about last week on the show because of the fact I did put video and audio on the show. I got dinged and a lot of you in other countries weren't able to watch it directly but when that does happen should it happen in the future I'm going to put a link to download the show that will be the first link down below in the description um, I think this one will avoid that problem but thank you to those people that actually even wrote into me with emails and PMs saying I couldn't watch your show and then I was able to pass on the link to you to be able to still see the show and this is funny too because the material I used was totally within fair use and even material that was on YouTube already itself but you know, you deal with what you have to deal with, but check out this one from Adam Savage and his um, his idea of uh, what he likes and what he doesn't like about this robot spider. I think it's really, really excellent. And last story. Um, sorry about the jump cut edit, but, but I ran out of memory, so I had to go dump some files off. But last story from 1954 Shadow. This is uh, the Dove Satellites. This was three NASA scientists that decided with some venture capital around fifty four million dollars from a, a Russian millionaire decided to make a um, company that could put uh, commercial pictures available in fast time and available from anywhere in the planet as quickly as possible what they did was they already launched four of these as a test and it's the size of a bread box it's basically just um, a small package containing a camera, batteries, and solar panel, just the very minimum you can get by with. And these things are disposable because they're only going to be flying from between one and three year lifespan, 300 mile low orbit. So the drag and just being so low in orbit is probably going to take these things out. But in a way, it's good too because they're cheap. They can keep upgrading them and keep launching them. Well, 28 more of them are going to be launched fairly soon. And then as people want to buy photographs from them for various reasons. Now, if, you, if you're worrying about privacy or anything like that, according to them, the smallest thing you're going to be able to discern what it is is something the size of a truck. So if you think they're going to be, um, you know, reading something small as a, a newspaper or something like that, no, these are not spy satellites used for that purpose. These are for commercial and for sale, but just something to be used um, so that you can get photographs quick and from anywhere on the planet is as quickly as possible and hopefully make some money. I guess if they've already invested 50 something million in it, they're hoping to make quite a bit of profit besides that. But um, pretty good idea, you know, cheap in many of them and easily disposable, easy replaceable. So um, don't know what the cost is or the pricing or anything because it's a rather new thing. But if there's any kind of new information and anybody finds out about it or if I find about it, um, I will let you know. There's also a lot more information. I could have made this probably a half hour show today because a lot of other people have sent stuff in. I've still got it ready to go for next week's show and beyond that. So thank you everybody for what you send in and for uh, just continually doing it. Without you guys, this show would not be possible. So that's about it for this week. Take care, you guys. I'll catch you next week. <laughs>